All right, so I'm going to go through the, the quizzes questions first. Um, I'll be honest, those, those results were scary. All right, it says, how would you solve a book club offers a choice of eight books from a list of 40, and how many ways can a member make a collection? This was what? It doesn't say in what order they're going to read those books, right? It's just saying that you're pulling from the group of 48 books, which would be combination. Okay, if it had asked in what order they can be read, those eight books can be read, now you're talking about a, a, um, a permutation. So just make sure you pay attention to this, the wording. An election ballot asks voters to select three city commissioners from a group of six candidates. How many ways can this be done? How do you find it? Or just combination or permutation? Combination, again, it doesn't say in which way, in which order. Like, you're not filling specific seats within those uh, commissioners. It's just the group of commissioners. So this would be combination with your N being 6 and your R being 3. Combination is 6 factorial over 6 minus 3 factorial times 3 factorial. 6 factorial over 3 factorial times 3 factorial. And then the 6 gets broken down. 6, 5, 4, 3 over 3 factorial. 3, 2, 1. These are going to cancel. 2 and six would, two and 3 would go into 6. And then 5 times 4, which is 20. Right. It's not like it was a first seat, second seat, third seat. How can they be filled? Minerva has a standard deck of 52 playing cards. What's the probability that Minerva will draw a jack card and a king card without replacement? So remember the words that are important are and or or, right? Which one is this? And, that's an and, which means what when I get the probability? And is multiplying. And then the second important part of this is to figure out if there's replacement or not. What, uh, is there a replacement? No, so this is an and, which means multiplication. And there's no replacement, which means once you pull the first card, you're assuming it's going to be met, that, that probability is going to be met. The second one is obviously altered. So we're saying the probability that she'll get a jack times the probability that she's going to get a king having already gotten the jack. So how many jacks are in your deck? Four out of 52. And then assuming that the jack was already pulled, how many kings are left? Four, how many cards are left? 51. So this would be 1 13th times 4 over 51. Or 4 over 13 times 51, which is 663. Because there's four kings left? But we've already pulled one card out, which means the cards went from 52 to 51. All right, this one says the ski club in, with 10 members uh, is to choose three different officers for captain, co-captain, and secretary. How many ways can these offices be filled? Now we're talking about specific ones, right? Which means this is now what? Permutation. So it is a permutation. 10 members is your N taken three at a time. So this is 10 factorial over 10 minus three factorial or 10 factorial over seven factorial. 10 times nine times eight times seven factorial over seven factorial. These are gonna go, go away and I'd get 72 times 10, which is 720. Okay, how would you solve? How many ways can you line up your eight trophies that you've won over the years on a shelf in your room? That's what? Mm -mm. It's factorial. It's factorial. You're figuring out the order of a whole set, right? You're not pulling out a couple. You're literally saying, okay, I could put this one first and then that one second and then, or I could rearrange it. That's factorial.
A box contains five purple marbles, three green marbles, and two orange marbles. Draws are made without replacements. What's the probability that both mar uh, marbles are, are purple? So this is an and or an or. Both marbles are purple, right? Which is? Multiplication, and I want the probability that the marble is purple the first time. Is there a replacement? No, so the probability that it is purple given it was purple the first time. If there was replacement, obviously I just multiply those two out. But this time we're saying, okay, what's the probability I pick a purple the first time? How many total marbles are there? 10. How many are purple? Five. So it's five out of 10 for the first one. And then assuming I pulled a purple one the first time, how many purple are left? Four. And how many total marbles are left? Nine. So I can do one half, two, four, and then I get two ninths. Okay, you spin this spinner three times. Find the probability that these three events will occur. The probability it's a red. Is that an or or an and? It's an and. Probability it's an odd. Is there a replacement this time? Yeah, like every time you spin the spinner, you don't lose it, right? And then the last one, the probability that it's three. So what is the probability that you spin a red the first time? One out of six probability you spin an odd number one half or three out of six probability that it's a three one out of six so I get one times one times one which is one and then six times two times six which is 72 okay how do you solve from 20 DVDs you purchased in the past year, you plan to take five on, with you on vacation. How many different sets of five can you take? Is that combination, factorial, MPC, which is like your, um, yeah, it's, it is combination. Yeah, yeah. Because it doesn't say anything about the order you're watching them, right? You're just grabbing five. If it said you plan to watch five movies, in what order can you watch those five movies? Now it's permutation. A disc jockey has thrown, chosen three songs for the last few minutes of his evening show. There are nine songs he feels are appropriate for that time slot. How many ways can he choose and arrange to play three of those nine songs? This is a what? Permutation. Permutation. Three songs are as three, and there are nine songs total. So nine. Say that again. Because it says how, how does he choose and arrange to play. If it just said choose combination, but he's talking about the arrange, meaning the order in which those are going to be played. Now it's permutation. This is 6, 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 factorial over 6 factorial, and then 9 times 8 times 7 is 504. Okay, how many two-digit numbers can you make using the digits one, two, three, and four without repeating the digits? So I've got two digits, yes. How many choices do you have for the first one? Say again. All four, right? Now they can't repeat, which means how many are left that I can use to the second one? Three. Robin has five different pairs of shoes that match with six different pairs of socks. How many shoes and sock combination can she make if she set, selects one pair of shoes and one pair of socks? So we are just trying to figure out how many options there are, right? Which means I would take my two separate events, the first that it's a pair of socks, and the second that it's shoes, and multiply them together. There are five pairs of shoes, six pairs of socks, which means in total there would be 30 different options. Okay, so let's talk test. Okay, test in two days. You get to use a four function calculator, either one you bring or one that I provide for you. You just want to be comfortable with whatever it is. 
Um, airs, there's 19 questions on the test. The one binomial expansion counts for double. Everything else is equal weight. Um, and obviously it covers 8, 1 to 8, 6. So two ways, two quick ways to review um, would be your quizzes. You have a quiz on 8, 1 and 8, 3, 2, 8, 3. Um, and then you have a quiz on 8, 4 and 8, 5. So the only thing that's not on those quizzes is the probability that we kind of just talked about um, from the quizzes. So I'm going to go through most of this. I'm going to skip over some things because I feel like, you, I mean, you tell me what you need me to work out, but I can, I'll post the answers to all of it um, as a PDF, but I, you need to let me know what you need review on, okay? Which means you got to be vocal. So the first section was just sequences in general. This is where you're finding something like the first five terms of the sequence. So you're plugging in one, plugging in two, plugging in three, plugging in four, plugging in five, right? So A sub one would be 1 over 1 minus 2, 1 over negative 1, which is negative 1. A sub 2 would be 2 over 2 minus 2, which is 2 over 0. What's 2 divided by 0? Undefined. Undefined. So that can be part of your set, okay? And then I would keep going and find all five terms. Do we feel confident in this one, right? This is, okay. All right. Then we go to find the indicated term of the sequence. So it says a sub n is 4 over 3 to the n, and you're, try you're trying to find a sub 4. So this would be a sub 4 would equal 4 over 3 to the 4th. And then this is where your calculator is going to help you, but realize that there's no exponential button on that calculator. You're going to have to do 4 times 4 times 4 times 4 over 3 times 3 times 3 times 3, and then you're going to leave it as a simplified fraction. So I don't want any rounded numbers. I don't want decimals as answers. You're gonna leave these as simplified fractions, okay, that are exact. All right, then we went into recursive. So find the first four terms of the sequence defined recursively. For these, they will always give you a starting point. In this case, I gave you a sub one is five, and then it wants the five terms including that. So a sub one will always be the first one. And then a sub 2 would be 2 times 5 minus 3, which is 10 minus 3 or 7. a sub 3 is 2 times 7 minus 3 or 14 minus 3, which is 11. a sub 4 is 2 times 11 minus 3 or 22 minus 3, which is 19. And that, oh, that's it. It said four terms. And then you want to list them. You just want to make sure you include that first term as part of your four. Okay, that's a common mistake made there. People forget the five and then go to the next one. Five would be the first of your four terms. Questions on recursive? I have a question. Mm -hmm. The first one, when you list the numbers, would you list undefined? Yep, you would list undefined as part of your choices. Yeah. All right, then came your generic sum. So find the sum of any sequence or series, not necessarily arithmetic or geometric. It could be anything. And for these, we always start at the bottom number and work our way up to the top number and add them together at the end, right? So our lower bound is 2, which means I'm going to do 3 times 2. Our upper bound is 4, so I'm going to do 3 times 3. And then I'm going to do 3 times 4. And then I'm going to add them all together. Okay, if it is arithmetic, then we can also do it in the way we're going to look at in a little bit. If it's geometric, there's another way to do it. But if it's neither of those or it's just simpler just to add them, which it might be, then you can just do it the way we did. Just remember that you start at the bottom and you stop at the top. You don't go to the, like, it doesn't mean that the top being four means there are four terms. All right, then we did factorials. We've done a lot since then, so hopefully these are easy. I would break down the eight till I hit the five. These are gonna cancel and I get eight times seven times six, which is 336. Question so far. Okay, then we went to arithmetic sequences. So it started the same way, write the first five terms of the sequence, determine whether the sequence is arithmetic, and if so, find the common difference. So I would first find a 1, a 2, a 3, a 4, and a 5. 
So 4 minus 2 times 1, which is 2. 4 minus 2 times 2. 4 minus 2 times 3. 4 minus 2 times 4. And 4 minus 2 times 5. Those are the first five terms. And then arithmetic means you're adding or subtracting the same number from each term. So if I compare 2, 0, negative 2, negative 4, and negative 6, what's happening every time? Subtracting 2. So yes, this is arithmetic. And D is negative 2. If it was increasing every time, it's positive 2. If it's decreasing, it's negative. All right, then we got to finding the formula a sub n for the arithmetic sequence. This is the first of your formulas. All of the formulas are on a Quizlet. The link is on the bottom of the module. Um, everything from this stuff into the probability. So they're all there. Practice as much as you need. To find the equation or the a sub n for arithmetic, it is a sub 1 plus d times n minus 1. So if I gave you a sub 1 is 15 and d is negative 4, this would be a sub n equals 15 minus 4 times n minus 1. And then you would distribute and combine your like terms. And then from there, it might ask you to then find like the 10th term or the 5th term or the 6th term. And you would just take and plug that in. If I give you a sub 1 and ask for the first five terms of the arithmetic, you're just going to take negative 3 and add 12 to it. So I'd get 9, and then I would take 9 and add 12 to it and get 21, and then 21 and add 12 to it and get 33, and then 33 and add 12 to it and get 45, and then list them. Negative 3, 9, 21, 33, 45. That first term is always part of my set. Okay, second equation came from the partial sum. So if your series is arithmetic, then I can find the sum by doing n over 2 times a sub n, I'm sorry, a sub 1 plus a sub n. So this is first and that's last. So again, for these, this has to be arithmetic. I'm not going to ask you for a partial sum that's not arithmetic at that point, okay? Obviously, later you'll see geometric, but the words will change. So how do I know the number of terms? If the bottom number is 1, it's the top number. Remember, if the bottom number is 0, I have to add on to it 1. If the bottom was 2, I'd take off of it 1. Okay, But if the bottom is 1, the top number is your n. So that's 120 over 2. First, I would take 1 and plug it in. That's 3. Last, I would take 120 and plug it in, and that's 360. So I'd get 60 times 363. which is 21,780. So I'm hoping the calculator helps with your speed, right? And helps with silly mistakes that are made like that. Questions so far? Okay, then came geometric sequences. So A3 was geometric. These are ones in which you're multiplying the same number every time. So find the first five terms of the geometric sequence, find the expression for the nth term, and then find the indicated term. So this is now third equation. That's how you find the nth term if it is geometric. It is a sub 1 times r to the n minus 1. So if I wanted to find the first term, I would take, or the first term's given, negative 5, and then I would take negative 5 and multiply it times 2 fifths, and that's negative 2, that's term 2. Multiply it times 2 fifths, negative 4 fifths, that's term 3. Multiply it times 2 fifths, negative 8, 
20 fifths, multiply it times 2 fifths, negative 16 over 125, first term, second term, third term, fourth term, fifth term. Then it says find the expression for the nth term. So here's where you want your equation. a sub n would equal a sub 1, which is negative 5, times r, which is 2 fifths to the n minus 1. What number did I put on yours? What is n? 8. Eight? Okay. So then I would do negative 5, 2 fifths to the 8 minus 1, negative 5, 2 fifths to the seventh power. So this is where you're going to use the calculator to help you, but it's not obviously going to give you the overall answer because that would be a decimal. I don't want that. You're going to have to do 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 because there's no exponent. Okay, so 2 to the seventh is 128. And then 5 to the seventh, 5 times 5 times all the way through, it's 78,125. And then divide that by 5 because it's going to go in evenly. And I get negative 128 over 15,625. Be careful, make sure you read the instructions because there are three parts of those questions and if you don't read it carefully, you might skip a part, okay? First five terms was the first part. Nth, ex expression for the nth term is the second part and then the overall indicated term at the end, the eighth term in this case. Questions on that one? All right, probably question missed most on the first quiz, which was A1, A3, was something like this. Okay, I'm not giving you the first term anymore. So we went from the third term to the seventh term. Remember that when you jump, you have to use the exponent on the R to bridge that gap. So I put the bigger base on the left, which is A7, time, and then equals A to the three in this case, or whatever the smaller one is. R and the exponent on the R has to be the difference between those two bases. So what's the exponent have to be? Four. I want the base on the right and the exponent on the R to add up to the one on the left. So then I'd get 80 over 27 equals A sub 3, which is 15, times R, which is what I don't know, to the fourth. I would divide both sides by 15 or multiply by 1 15th here. 5 goes in here 3 times, 16 times. I get 16 over 81 equals r to the fourth. Find the fourth root. You won't have a root, so you're going to have to either use your factor tree or test it out in reverse. This is 2 over 3. And then it wants the tenth term. So when I do the tenth term, I can either use a to the third times r to the seventh, because I need to bridge that gap, or I can do a to the seventh, A7 times R to the third. So that's 80 over 27, two thirds to the third. 80 over 27 times eight over 27, and then 80, 640 over 27 times 27, 729. Questions on that one? Okay, then we get to the sum finite and infinite when you're dealing with geometric. So if it's finite, obviously there's a bottom and there's a top number. You could literally plug in one, two, three, four, five, and six and add it like you do with your generic one at the beginning. But obviously it's gonna be quicker to use the equation for these. The equation for the finite sum is a sub one times one minus r to the n over one minus r. The r is whatever's being raised to the exponent. So the r in this case is one fourth. The a sub one is whatever's next to that, which in this case would be negative three. So I'd get negative three times one minus one fourth 
and the n, if the bottom number is 1, the top number is my n, so this is to the 6th power over 1 minus 1 fourth. 4 times 4 times 4 times 4 times 4 times, I don't know, I lost count. 6 times would be 4,096. Change this, this would be 4,096 over 4,096. And this would be 4 over 4. Keep change flip here. This goes in 1365. This goes in 1024. And then I would multiply 1365 times 3. Again, I don't want a decimal. I don't want a rounded number. You want to keep that exact. Okay, then comes infinite sum. I know it's infinite because the number at the top has an infinity symbol. For these, it is a sub 1 over 1 minus r. Again, the r is the one that's being raised to the power. So the r in this case is 2 thirds. In order for this to work, the r has to be between 0 and 1. I ignore the sign. If that was a negative 2 thirds, it's fine. It has to fall between 0 and 1. So r is 2 thirds. Whatever's on the front of that is your a sub 1. In this case, it's 1. So I'd get 1 over 1 minus 2 thirds, or 3 thirds minus 2 thirds, which is 1 over 1 third. Keep, change, flip, and it's 3. For the second one that's there, my r is 4. That's not in between 0 and 1. This can't be done. And if it says, if not, state why, and you just write, can't be done, obviously you're losing points. So you want to make sure that you elaborate on why. The absolute value of r has to be less than 1. So if it is bigger than 1, it can't be done. Questions so far? All right, I'm not going to work these examples out because we're about to run out of time, but I want to just talk about it, expanding the binomial. I would say common mistakes made for this on your quiz was not multiplying out all the parts. Remember, each term has two numbers and two variables, and all that needs to get multiplied together at the end to get one term for each space. You're not going to get a question this time on Pascal's triangle, so it's up to you how you fill that space. Obviously, if this is being raised to the fourth power, I need five terms. I could just work my way down pretty quick. This is probably way faster than doing the, um, the C all the way through. I would probably recommend that. You won't get a question that just asks for a single combination or permutation that comes later.